Photo video tutorials one drop up. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the perspective filter in Finzi. Now, first thing to do, just got this image, and I always like to use the layers and duplicates. So go to layer and duplicate. So that's duplicated, you've got the same image. The reason for that is you can of course use over here, you've got opacity, you've got blending mode. So you can actually use dark and dark colour, all that sort of thing, just there. But you can use it with the effect. You'll notice when you actually go in the filter, I'm just going to quickly go over here to filters and distort and perspective. And there's option here, single plane, dual plane, and I'm just going to go for single plane first, but you'll notice there's no option for blending modes there. So, you know, it's quite nice just to duplicate the layer and then you've got that option if you want. And plus it becomes near enough like a live effect because you can just remove it. There is a live filter as well. So I'm just going to show that in a sec as well. So you go single plane and you can see it just moves that around. You can just, of course it's useful for lining up against it. So if you've got something you want to line up, move that around. So you've got some maybe text you want to move around. You can move that and position it like that. Or it's just great for some visual effects. And like I say, you could just create three, four, five, six layers, maybe make cubes, a whole range of different sort of distort images and use this perspective filter just for, for that. Don't have to actually use it for any actual sort of carefully nudging the pixels. You can actually use it for sort of distortions. Right, now, so in distorting, you actually go over that way, so you can actually create some nice sort of mirror effects there, reflections, move that around, and sometimes it just goes completely weird like that. Okay. So that's the single plane. Now, there's also a dual plane and it will just reset itself. And what you can do then, you can see you can move that, squeeze that down, move that over there, that over there as well. And again, you can create some interesting perspective effects. And of course, if I move that out of the way, you can actually move that. You can actually move it off as well. You don't actually have to keep it on the screen. You can flip over there, you can create, move that there. So a whole range of different ones. Also available again, if you've got say like a skyline sort of, you want to create some sky, uh, skyscrapers or some text effects you want to sort of zoom off into, there's a whole range of different things you can do with this perspective effect. So it's quite useful. That. Now, there is also another option here and I'm just going to cancel that. So you've got that, go to filters and distort and perspective. Now this is a slightly different one and because obviously the default there is destination. Well, you can actually use source as well. And source is odd, because you can actually just move that over there and then apply. And you can see it just so it drags it in a different way than that. It's not so visual. Anyway, so I must admit, I normally stick with destination approach, but that's an option as well. Like I say, you've got the two layers. So if you've got the two, you can just go there and you just go to filters, distort and perspective. And you can just move that around there and Apply. So you've got that. And of course, it's just a layer. You can just go over there. You can move the layer around, just like that. Or just use a blending mode. So you can just try different blending modes and just go through those as well. As well as change, obviously, your opacity. And you can apply other effects, of course, sharpen, whatever, distort, and then maybe deform, and then manipulate that, and then course combine with the underlying layer and of course you can use three four five six seven whatever number of layers with that perspective effect right so once you've actually got that and I'm going to go back now because obviously I've done that what I want to show is there's also the option for layer and new life filter layer and perspective filter so perspective filter there so you've got that the thing here though is there's no option for dual plane for some reason. Anyway, I'm certain there's some reason that I, but anyway, there's the actual effect. So you can actually manipulate it as before. You've got all the same options, that, but you can just manipulate that. And also, of course, if you have multiple layers, this one obviously I've just got transparency in the background, but you can use blending modes. You can just go there as well, just run through the blending modes and see the original as well. So that's just a great little feature with 
the live perspective option. And of course with the live perspective option, you can actually see, if you just go over here to layers, is you've actually got the effect there. So if you decide you don't want the effect, you can actually just go there, you can actually just get rid of it. That's it, it's just gone. You can also delete it as well, select it and delete it. So it's, it's a useful way of just controlling the effect so you can remove it anytime. And of course you can always then add another one. So you just go to layer and just go to distort perspective, yep. get the right one, go down there and you can see you can manipulate it again like that. And again, it's over there. You can see in the layers, you've got perspective, perspective, and again, you've got the, just puts it down there. So you can put that and you can then remove it once you're happy with that design. But again, you can go there and you can remove it or remove the other one as well. And that's a quick run through of perspective. Obviously you could use it probably for thousands more things than that, but that's just a quick run through of some of the features. Always adding lots and lots and lots of new videos every couple of weeks. And also there's the Graphic Extras website. Lots and lots of different tutorials on there concerning Affinity Photo, as well as Affinity Designer, and many, many more. Photoshop, Illustrator, as well as lots of products that can actually be used with Affinity Photo. Like brushes and patterns can be found on the site and freebies as well. I hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.